Welcome, everybody. Today, I want to share some accessories that make developing with the Oculus way more enjoyable. Now, will any of these items make you a better developer? Well, no, but they will help you remove some pain points, and that might be the difference between you developing for one hour a day to four hours a day. A nice thing about all these different accessories is there's tons and tons of options for each one. I'll list off a few of my favorites and ones that I've used myself, as well as some that have been reviewed by others. If any of these items interest you, I'll have affiliate links down below in the description, and you know what? That will actually help support the channel at no extra cost to you. So with that, let's dive in. Starting off with number five is a carrying case. There are tons of options to pick from, but the one that I went with is the Bobo VRC2. It has a lot of space inside to allow me to have a different head strap, which we'll talk about in a moment, as well as fit in my controllers and any other accessories that I need. What makes a carrying case so important as an accessory? Well, it allows me to have a place to place my Oculus while I am not using it so I don't step all over it, as well as a way to transport it when I want to show off applications that I've developed to my friends. I don't have any friends but the day that I get one, this carrying case is gonna come in handy. And number four on the list is gonna be a new Oculus head strap. You see, the head strap that comes with the Oculus is really not ideal, especially if you're trying to develop in Unity. When you're developing in Unity, you have to take off the head mounted display a lot. When you're pressing play or you're tweaking something, having something that redistributes the weight so you can do that easily is immensely helpful. And for myself, I bought the Halo head strap by IOVROI Go. You'll notice with this that it redistributes the weight to both the front and back of your head and it has a little adjustable knob at the very back of it to easily loosen and tighten up your headset. Although this isn't the best head strap, it is fairly cheap and can range from $20 to $27 depending on when it's on sale. Another one that you might want to consider is the Bobo VR M2 Pro, just like the case, but this is their head strap. And the head strap's really cool because it also has a magnetic battery pack on the back of it. So if you want to have extended development times, this might be a head strap for you. The only drawback is it sits around $50, which is about double from the one I suggested. No matter what head strap you choose, you will not be disappointed in the quality of life improvement that you'll have, especially when developing games. And speaking of quality of life improvements, let's talk about number three, an NVMe SSD. The difference between an NVMe SSD and a standard hard disk drive can be pretty drastic. You see, HDDs can read and write at speeds of 150 megabytes per second, but an NVMe SSD can do read and write speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes per second. That's almost 23 times faster. I personally went with the 970 EVO by Samsung, but whatever NVMe SSD you choose, well, it shouldn't matter too much because no matter what, it is going to make it faster than fast. And all that speed comes in pretty handy when you you're dealing with beefy Unity projects. You see, I have ADHD and any moment it takes for a program to boot up is another moment for me to get lost in 30 minutes looking for the best ergonomic office chair. It's Herman Miller, by the way. Cruising into number two is the cable link. It's not exciting, but it is kind of a mandatory accessory, and that's why it's so high up on the list. Without it, you can't really develop using Unity in an Oculus. Well, you could still develop using, you know, Horizons, but let's not go there. So what makes a good cable link? Well, in my opinion, it's one that connects to your Oculus and your PC. That's it, and sits between 16 and 20 feet. Now, personally, I went with 20 feet, and it ended up being a bit too long. Also, I picked to unknown brand that didn't have a lot of reviews just because it would get to my doorstep the quickest. I'm not going to suggest you do that. Instead, I'm going to suggest a different cable link for you, which is the Syntec link cable that is 20 feet, but you can also get it in 16 feet or 10 feet, depending on what you need. And it has plenty of reviews and it looks like it's tried and true. And if you don't trust an off brand, well, you can also go with the Quest 2 link cable, but that's going to net you around 70 to 80 bucks. And Honestly, I don't understand why it costs so much. I mean, Zuckerberg already has all my data. Why does he need all my money? And my number one pick is a Wi-Fi 6 ready router. 
Not only does this allow you to connect to your PC using the Wi-Fi, but it also improves the speeds of all your other devices throughout your entire house. It's like a win-win-win. To find the right router for myself, I actually went to Virtual Panda, who is another VR YouTuber, and they did a great detailed video displaying all the different speeds of all the different routers that they used. And I ended up going with the Asus AX1800 at their recommendation. And it can be a little pricey at 120 to 130 depending on what sales going on that day. So you might want to go for a cheaper option, which he also recommends called the TP-Link AX1500. If you'd like to see the detailed information on the stats on these things, I'm gonna make a link to that specific video in the description below. It's been pretty smooth sailing for myself since I've gotten this new router. Hey, look at that, that's my whole list. Let me know in the comments if there are any other accessories that you find incredibly helpful. I'd love to hear about them and I will be back to tutorials soon enough. I just needed a little break and want to have a little fun with something. And well, I gotta say, this was fun. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.